Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Delicious. Today is Tuesday, November 3rd, blah, 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 November 15th, uh, halfway through November, amazingly enough. U.S. Thanksgiving next week. This month's just going to be gone. I, I'm going to have a low word count month. Uh, the good news is that uh, I do have, um, I've made progress, made progress on revising the novella, and you all will be <laughs> probably delighted and totally unsurprised to know that it's not awful. Um, it's it's why I keep coming back to this thing, and, and I'm sorry to harp on it if you have heard me harp on it many, many times, but I have to rediscover it myself, which is that you cannot conflate the experience of writing with the experience of reading. The uh, This novella, for whatever reason, was just took a while to write and felt torturous in places, and um, my friend Kelly, Robson pointed out that I, I was interrupted a lot, so there there was that. Uh, I didn't get a smooth run at this one, um, but so so far I've revised sixty nine out of one hundred and eight pages, a little shy of twenty nine thousand words. I cut a little bit, but not much. And all this stuff that I thought was really slow and torturous, it's fine. It's reading. Just I I have no idea what my problem was. Um, cannot conflate the experience of writing with the experience of reading. And I can't believe I said all of that in under two minutes already. <laughs> so, um, you know, some days the, the timer goes really fast and some days it goes really slow. Time. What is time? So anyway, um, I should be done revising today. I think I do want to add a little bit to the end. I might be able to get that done today. Wouldn't that be nice? Do my out loud proofing tomorrow. Start in on bandits on Thursday. So, yeah, I was talking to um, one of the people I'm doing the writing retreat with the week after Thanksgiving, and I forgot to ask about if I can say who and where. Uh, I might just wait. <laughs> I do have it on my list to, to ask the people. Um, I don't know. I feel, so this, true confessions here. Um, the other people who are going, three are unpublished authors, and the other is a published author uh, who is has not published as much as I have. Um, she's, she's done some really great things, but she's also had interruptions in her career. I was talking with her at World Fantasy, so I don't think she would mind me saying this, um, you know, sort of about strategies for rebooting her career, about getting some stuff out there again. So, so I'm the one of this group who is like, I don't even know how to put this. Like I hang myself out on social media, right? I do this podcast. Um, I put things on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. And when people say things to me like, oh, I'm going to leave Twitter, I'm going to leave Facebook. You know, I say, yeah, I totally understand that. But the reason I'm on is because of the books that I feel like this is part of me being out there, right? So I do feel self-conscious about saying, you know, like, but what about my social media profile? Uh, I think that they would all say that's perfectly fine. And then, and then I feel dorky asking about it. So anyway, I was talking with one of the folks that are going and he's one of the unpublished writers. And he said, um, he was asking me, he said, you know, for me and for these other folks, the writing retreat week is a week where we you know, like get 40 hours of time that we would not otherwise have to write because it's an escape from our lives and we get to write. And he was curious what it was like for me, which I thought was funny because 
uh, I have this, um, I felt this way when I went to the writing retreat in June too, um, that it is a disruption of my schedule. And I, and I know that I'm a little weird about my schedule that I am, uh, I mean, one of my things, right, is to build a fence around the writing and defend it with all your might. And I do that. Uh, it tends towards the freaky obsessive side sometimes, I know. And yet, how can you not be freaky and obsessive about your wall or about your fence with the spiral barbed wire at the top and all of this, right? So, yeah, uh, going on writing retreat, I just keep thinking about like all the ways that I will be distracted and not in my usual writing groove as opposed to an intense week of writing. And maybe I need to rethink um, because he was talking about, you know, like evenings and all this. And I nearly reflexively said, uh, I don't write in the evenings. I write in the mornings. And it's like, Jeffy, you could write in the evenings if I don't drink wine. So anyway, we'll see. Uh, maybe I will just go and try it doing like a freewheeling uh, word, word splurge at the retreat. The thing is, is it's going to be in this really, really beautiful place um, where there's a pool and a beach and amazing things to do. And I was telling one of my other author friends about it. Uh, I was telling, I could tell you it was Jennifer Easter. Uh, I read her second book in the Galactic Bonds, and it's fabulous. Uh, so I was giving her my notes on it. But I was also telling her about this trip I'm going on, and she's like, that sounds amazing, and all of this. And I'm like, yeah, I just really hope I can make progress on Bandits. And she's like, she, she starts laughing at me, because she's into the Clifton Strength stuff, too. And she's like, that's your achiever, which we share. She said that you're even thinking about working on your vacation. I'm like, it's not a vacation. It's a writing retreat. It's del deliberately not a vacation, right? Yeah. So wouldn't it be cool if I could get lots and lots of words, if I could really make huge progress on the Bandits book over the retreat? I would love that. And also, hang on the beach. Uh, that was something else he said, because there's like a private beach. And he said, we could just take our laptops down to the beach and write on the beach. And I nearly said, oh, I can't write on the beach. <laughs> Aren't I awful? But, you know, I, I started thinking about, well, sun on the screen and where am I going to, you know, I need my, I want to have my standing desk because I am taking, I figured out how to have a standing desk with my camera tripod. <sighs> Sometimes, you all, I, I despair of myself. Uh, but my future biographer, you will probably be going through these podcasts. Um, I hope they are a rich source of material for you. Uh, I sympathize with you for having to spend so much time going through them all. I hope they're entertaining. But this will be something that you can say about she was freaky about her writing process. Um, so anyway. Enough about that. Let's see, what else do I have to tell you? I'll, oh, um, I was interviewed yesterday. My mom wanted to know about this, but I think she got confused about like the breadth and depth of this. But I was interviewed by a reporter from an Irish magazine, uh, which was fun. Uh, I did a Zoom session with her yesterday. She interviewed me about the, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know why I'm a little froggy today. Got cold last night. Uh, she interviewed me about the, uh, I don't know, the cultural acceptance of sex and books, of smutty books, of erotic books, and uh, the prevalence of it on TikTok and so forth. She said she interviewed the gal who did that viral TikTok uh, episode on the um, the barbarians, the, the blue ice planet barbarians with the big dicks kind of thing. She did that. Uh, by that TikTok that went viral and really launched that book. And uh, amusingly, the reporter said, she's an author now, too, which I hadn't known. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, of course, she became an author, too. 
that sounds cynical. I don't mean it to sound cynical. So anyway, she has interviewed a bunch of different people for this article. And she had asked me, it came through someone else that suggested me because I have, um, alas, dear readers, a career perspective, right? Decades of experience now. Uh, so yes, I, you know, gave her my perspective. She had originally asked me if I could answer interview questions via email and I, uh, I did not want to. I really hate answering questions, doing interviews by it, by a text. I would much rather let's hop on a zoom. I didn't realize she had limited zoom time. I would have offered to do the zoom myself if I had realized, cause she's like, I'm going to run out of zoom. So she was charming. I really enjoyed talking with her. You know, interviews, they just go so much better if you can have the back and forth. So I really appreciated her doing the uh, accommodating me that way. So that was that. Went and got my manicure yesterday. Very exciting. Uh, yeah. So what else do I have to tell you? I feel like I need like a reader mail bag or something like that. So on these days where I feel like I don't have that much to say. Uh, something else I was talking about with this aspiring author is why he asked why I write, which was an interesting question because he was talking about why he's wanting to at this point in his life after having uh, considerable sex, <laughs> sex, probably that too, but we don't know, do we dear reader? Um, success in other arenas of his life. And so it's like, he doesn't want this for money. He wants it for uh, himself. And he was talking about his reasons why. And it, it was interesting hearing uh, why he had decided later in life, like after the age of 40, that he wanted to write something. And it was partly because he had a friend who wrote a novel that he felt like wasn't very good. And he's like, I could write something. I feel like I could do this. So there's something about that satisfaction because this person does not need money. And it's that wanting to, he, he mentioned wanting to have something left of himself after he's gone from the world, which I think is a common feeling. But he asked me why I did, why I write and I told him the story, which I might as well tell all of you. I've told it other times, but I might as well tell it here. I probably have, but, uh, you know, because I was getting my PhD in neuroscience and I was 24 and I was not happy. Uh, I thought I was going to be a research scientist. I love the science, but as any of you who have gone through graduate school and academia, you know that there's a lot of stuff in there that is like, not about the science. And I went to the neuroscience convention in New Orleans, which I thought was funny that he asked me about this at this time after I just came back from New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans has like pay, played this sort of regular milestone in my life, right? Various things have happened for me in and around New Orleans for a place that I've never lived. It's, it, the city has played a significant role and I love the city. Uh, so I was at the neuroscience convention and my uh, manic depressive Hungarian advisor, and I'm informed that that is an oxymoron, uh, was giving me shit about something and I had a meltdown and dramatically ran out of the convention center. And I thought there is a serious problem here, Jeffy. Uh, <laughs> you are this fucking miserable. And I thought, okay, well, <laughs> if this is not the life you want to have, then you better figure it out. And I thought, okay, well, if I took away all of the ifs, ands, buts, shoulds, expectations, and asked myself, what would be the perfect life? And I put the question out to the universe and I waited quietly. And the answer came back was to be a writer, was the perfect life. And I was totally surprised by that because it had never occurred to me <laughs> to be a writer, even though I love to write. 
and I started taking classes and I'd, I love to write when I was younger in particular, but you know, everybody, I feel like everybody writes when they're young, you know, everybody writes little stories. So, you know, I'd always been good at like essays. I took AP English, you know, all of those things, liberal arts education. But I started taking classes with visiting writers and yeah. Um, and, and slowly put the career together because it was like, this is what will bring you maximum happiness. And if you've been following me for a long time, I think I haven't talked about it in some time, but you know, I'm big on choosing, choosing the happy. I, I was using that uh, tag for quite a while that I make a lot of choices based on what will maximize my happiness. And not everybody loves that when you do that, right? Um, people will call you selfish if you do that. But, you know, imagine a world in which everyone made choices for maximum happiness. If everybody was really, truly happy, it seems like that would make everybody happy. And I know that the, that the great concern is that the concern is that people will, that it will be subtractive, that like what makes me really happy will make you really unhappy. That if I take this thing, then you will not have the thing that would make you happy. Uh, you know, and we come back to that concept of the zero sum game, right? You know, is that really true? Does my happiness necessarily mean that you have to lose happiness? And I don't believe that's true. And it's the same thing that we talk about uh, when people feel competitive, like there's only so much pie. So if I get a big piece of pie, then you get a smaller piece of pie. But life isn't that way. The world isn't that way. Uh, you know, the the more there's there's pie enough for everyone, <laughs> and someone having more pie doesn't mean that someone else has less pie. Uh, when we talk about it in terms of writing, we, you know, think in terms of, you know, like when people find books they want to read, they want to find more books like that to read. Uh, another way that people put it is a high tide floats all boats, right? So I think a lot of the misery in the world actually comes from people being unhappy. Uh, when someone is personally unhappy, they inflict their misery on someone else, right? So... Again, we come back to the Taoist perspective on this sort of thing that instead of trying to change the world, you change yourself and you try to make yourself and the things that you influence the very best that you can. And that's, um, that's a profound perspective, right? And that's, that's how I do things. Um, try to make myself the best that I can be, try to influence my corner of the world the best I can, um, the people I come in contact with, so forth. So on that note, I'm going to go forth and do good works, mostly work on my own stuff and get this novella done. Oh, um, the covers for the facets of passion all done so we could release five golden rings. I need to write that BCC novel, back cover copy, not the same thing as a blurb. I could talk about that but I'm out of time. All right. You all have a wonderful Tuesday and I will talk to you on Thursday. You all take care. Bye-bye.